Oh. Let people tune in right quick. You know, I'm back from vacation. Just thinking. My lamp. I can change the colors. Make something dim. Cozy. Let's see what color I like. What color I like. It's blue. Green. Let's try it. It's pink. Pink back me up. Let's talk peace. Let people tune in for a minute. I'm back from vacation. Y'all, when I tell you I am so relaxed and comfortable. And you know, it wasn't a long vacation. The best vacations to me are those that are really quick. Like quick getaways, they work wonders. Sometimes we feel like we need to take a long seven day cruise and that's just too long for me. I, I don't really like to be on a ship past four days. But let's just talk peace. Peace doesn't mean life is perfect. And many times we think that we need to, our life has to be perfect before we can experience peace. I know so many people right now that could be at peace. Hey, Paula, that could be at peace but won't even allow themselves to fathom the thought that they're not, the thought that they create their own peace. And I didn't say peace means life is perfect. That doesn't mean the stars and the moon are aligned, but we create our own peace. And I was talking to a friend of mine about living strategically. And I said, you know, what I started doing Around the age 40, hey Nene, around, you know, around 40, I really started thinking about it, but I didn't really start living strategically, strategically until about 2019. I started living, I started thinking about everything versus going with the wind and seeing and what'll happen. And I said, because, you know, I was doing that before and look where I was. And... Being that I'm almost 50, this year I'll be 50, I have more years behind me than I have in front of me. But the years I have in front of me, by me starting to, me living strategically, are actually better years. Because I'm creating my own happiness. It's certain things I don't do and won't do because I know in the long run that creates, we create our own circumstances. That's like somebody right now. You just kind of live in I don't, I don't even want to say reckless, but you live in without thinking about the consequences of your actions. Thinking about, okay, if I drive on the left hand side of the road and it's wrong, eventually I will I'll get in a wreck. But we have many people who just they just live in. Not thinking about the consequences to their action. Let's just say, for instance, let's say I drink tequila. Tequila shot. Tequila shots make me sick. They truly, truly make me sick. So if I know I have things to do, obviously if I don't have anything to do, I don't allow myself to get so caught up in the moment that I'm taking tequila shots. Because I know with that, I'll be sick the next day. I won't even be right two days later. I'm not living like recklessly. And I don't mean just something like tequila shots. But I mean, when we choose our spouses, when we choose our partners, when we choose our friends. The friends you are around, they say, you know, look at the five people you hang around. You'll become one of those people. So we have to choose our friends 
and spouses, all of that. But that's a part of creating our own peace. And you know, like right now, everything isn't perfect. But, like my house is quiet, you all see that. Let me tell y'all about my daughters. I love my babies. My, my youngest daughter turned 31 yesterday. My daughter is on a solo cruise for her birthday. First of all, she paid for her own cruise. She picked in her own excursions. She drove down there. She did everything on her own. The fact that she's so at peace with herself and so confident in her ability to go on a cruise by herself at 31. At 31, I wouldn't have did that. I wasn't, I wasn't there then. So the fact that, you know, our children watch what we do, regardless of what we think. So now I'm living my life certain type of ways. We have, we have deep conversations. And for me to see that my 31 year old daughter was financially stable enough and confident enough to go on a cruise by herself. To go on excursions by herself. That lets me know that I'm doing a damn good job. Because my, my position in life now for my daughters is not to raise them because they're 31 and 32. My position in life is to be their advisor. And I'm realizing, okay, this advisor position, I'm doing very well on. They both have their own houses. They're both living their own life. There's nobody straining on me and all this different stuff. Not that things are perfect, like I said. Not that we get along and we just the best of besties. We have our times where we, we argue or disagree. But the fact that for her 31st birthday, she didn't have anybody to go with her. She said, I want to go. So my daughter was in the Bahamas today on a solo cruise. I have yet to be on a solo cruise. Now, I have gone solo to Cancun back in 2017 or 2018. I went to Cancun solo. And that is what really taught me that, hey, I like having my own room. I am independent. I'm good for me to catch two flights, you know, a flight and a connecting flight, go through customs. Catch the shuttle bus to the hotel. Do all of this stuff. Just me. So, in 2017, 18, 19, 20, 1, 3, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 24. So, that was seven years ago. So, that means I was 42. So, my first solo trip was at 42, which means that my daughter's, she's 31. She's 11 years ahead of me when it comes to her confidence her doing her own thing, which that's how things should be. That's how generational wealth is done. Also, how you are, you need to teach the next generation so that they are better than you are. They're smarter than you because your ceiling should be their floor. So my ceiling at 41 is my daughter's floor at 31 so she can build higher. And imagine how her daughter will build. You get what I'm saying? We need to make it where our children's Floor is our ceiling. And if we set our ceiling real low, their floor is real low. And it's hard for them to grow. So I'm 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 proud of that. And I'm proud of Dominique too, my oldest daughter. Taking care of business, you know, go to work, do her thing, enjoy her life. And I'm realizing that my daughters have found peace. At 31, I was married. I was divorced at 35. So between 30 and 31, I went through a lot of growing and changing and heartbreak and all of this stuff in this big old ball between 30 and 35. Around 35, I think I possibly could have been depressed. Thank God it wasn't nothing that was so bad that I had to go to, you know, get therapy or anything. But I was very disappointed in my life. I was very disappointed because I thought once I married him, that's how life would be. And I'm not blaming him. I'm not blaming me. That's just life was lifing for us. And I was still growing, not realizing that I wasn't as mature 
or that I didn't think through things the way that I think through them now. You know what I mean? So now, in a relationship, I think through things better. And like when we ended, he and I were not on good terms, but I actually went out to dinner well, we did a family dinner last week, last month for my oldest daughter, and he and I are good, like good. And they're like, I can't even remember exactly why we got a divorce. Not that we want to get back together, but it's just the fact that he and I are good. But about 15 years ago, I would have never sat down next to him at dinner. I would have never carried conversations on with him. I would have been... In my feelings and too stubborn to even let it go and just chill, just enjoy my daughter's birthday. You know what I'm saying? I would have been too in my feelings. And at the end of the day for me, now I realize I wasted a lot of time doing things like that. Being too in my feelings and too prideful to just stop it for a minute. Enjoy the moment. Allow my daughter or allow the moment to be happy. I'd be like, I ain't sitting by him. I ain't going over there and this and this. And that in turn makes other people's other people miserable. But now I'm more mature. And like I said, I have less years behind, less years in front of me than I have behind me. So I have to make my own peace. And that's what I'm doing. Like right now, I'm sitting here and I am truly at peace like I've gone through the fire to find this and to love me and to just say this is me and just to learn to live in my moments back in the day I would have never wore a thong I would have never wore a bathing suit like that and I was you know I'll be honest I was slimmer and sexier then in my 30s than I am now but it wasn't it's not about like okay at, on vacation, I met this lady. She was sitting next to me. And she was a shapely lady. Like lighter brown skin. Boom. Hips. Boom. And it, the, it was a red pool party. All red pool party. So I'm sitting next to her. And then we end up talking. And I said, why do you have on that big ass cover up? And that's just what I told her. She said, well, I ain't like you. I can't wear that. I said, stand up. She stood up. And y'all, the girl, lady was shaped like a Coke bottle. Like a beautiful Coke bottle. She insisted on wearing the cover up. And then I, we were talking. We had this whole conversation. Drinking margaritas and talking. I said, at what point will you allow yourself to live in the moment? I said, you have a beautiful shape. And you're wearing this beautiful red bathing suit. Everybody is just being them. Ain't nobody judging nobody. Everybody's just enjoying the moment. The weather was beautiful. The wind was blowing. The DJ was bumping. The drinks were good. Everybody was getting along. At what point do you allow yourself to just be? And then she took off that cover up. And that's just us sitting there. I said, why don't you just take it off? If you, this moment here may never come again. This moment is the perfect storm. This is a moment, ain't nothing but black love going on. Everybody comfortable. Everybody's just talking to each other, having a good time. The wind, y'all, the weather, the pool water was good. The DJ was good. The drinks were good. The vibe was awesome. That was the perfect moment to decide to live. And she came out of that cover up. And she had a beautiful body. And she's like, you know what? I'm glad I sat down here next to you. Hey, you. But we have to decide for ourselves how to create our peace. And we have to stop. We have to not equate peace with perfect. Life will never be perfect. But we have to find our own peace. And don't equate peace with the perfect day. Like, the pool party Sunday was a perfect storm, y'all. It really was. It really was. That don't come along like that often. But what I'm finding is, especially many of my lady friends, 
We equate peace with the perfect storm and then we never experience peace. We never, we don't even, some of us don't even think that we're worthy of peace because we've never thought about it. Like peace is something you damn, they damn near can't even tell you what it should feel like. Because many of us as black women, we're so addicted to the struggle. And we think it, it has to be so hard just to be us. When often we make things hard on our own. We make life hard on our own by our poor decisions. Often it's our poor decisions that make us not be able to experience peace. And what we won't do is we won't go and try to make the decisions better and make better decisions. We'll just live in the muck of unhappiness. Y'all get what I'm saying? And I just strategically said that I'm not going to do that. I'm no longer, I'll be 50. I can't even believe I'm 50. I'm, I'll be 50 in October. And I think y'all what radiates is people feel your vibration. They, they feel it. And the quality of people that you attract around you. I'm learning, I'm realizing, I didn't even think about this, but it's like sometimes people will, you know, especially men, they can feel when you're like just comfortable. They can feel it. And then you'll find them just like, whoop, right there on you. And you're like, whoa, I was just being, you know, I'm just being nice and just being there. But many times black men, they're so used to black women grabbing. She'll be pretty. She'll be fine. She'll have a nice car, but she'll be a bitch. And when they see in someone that, let's just say you're at the register. You say, hey, how you doing? Oh, something, a small talk come up. A bag of chips fall down. And you're like, oh, sure, you better pick that up. You know, blah, blah, blah. You're just laughing. That joker will get his stuff and 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 run behind you all the way to your car. And it'll be good quality ones. Because the bad quality ones, many times they won't talk to you. Because they don't, are the insecure ones. They won't do that. They want to. But because they're kind of insecure in themselves, they won't. So your, the quality of the guys will be better. It may be less. But the quality that will follow you around, uh, wait for you to get out your car. And then you get out and you're not really paying attention. And then they finally back up and they pull up. Behind you. Hey, how you doing? Like, hey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they, I think that, just like with the girl that was sitting next to me at the pool party, they can feel your energy. You can feel when a person is really comfortable and okay in their skin and okay in their spirit. And that makes people want to gravitate towards you. Not like I'm around a lot of people because I'm not, but I just, sometimes people just kind of gravitate towards you. And that does help a lot when it comes to my business because my business is a public service. So when we are renting cars and cleaning houses and cleaning cars and, you know, Airbnbs and stuff, you do need that positive vibration, that positive thing going on, that good energy. Because who wants bad energy cleaning their house? Who wants somebody with terrible energy to be in there walking around and see everything you have and touching everything, all your stuff? Cleaning your toilet, making your bed, all of that kind of stuff. Nobody really wants that. Same thing with your car. Who wants negative energy cleaning your car? Because that they, they leave their energy there. So I provide services. And with that, I have to have my energy good. You know what I mean? I have to have my mind right and comfortable. And like today, I didn't even really have to come back to town. And it didn't dawn on me until I was getting ready to leave. And I was talking to a few people. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to stay and blah, blah, blah. And it hit me that all of my business stuff was handled and being handled.
And if I wanted to, I could have rented a room for another day and not even came back. I could have stayed down in Daytona, had a room on the beach, and just been by myself and just relaxed. I wasn't pressed to get back to Duval. I have a meeting tomorrow, which is Tuesday, so I could have stayed there and came and just drove home, slow ride home in the Jeep with the top down. And I was like, dang. I went through some transitions in, in November where I revamped stuff and changed stuff around, and now it's paying off. And I'm like, wow, that's paying off. So I didn't have to, I wasn't pressed to get back. I came on back. But one day I'm not going to come back. One day I'm going to take my own self up on my offer and be like, why are you coming back? You have clothes. You have more than enough clothes. You can spend another night. You can sit right here on this balcony room and just chill. It's a beautiful day at the beach. You can go walk on the beach. You can sit on the beach. You can go back up. You can eat. You can chill. You can do whatever. And I'm going to take myself up on that offer. We're going to start doing more things like that. But that's another thing where I say we create our own peace. You know, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to wait on anyone to go with me to do what I want to do. Eventually, the right thing will catch up with me. Because we'll be on that same vibration. You get what I'm saying? So if I decide I'm going to go on a cruise by myself, I decide I'm going to stay at a hotel by myself, I decide I'm going to go to a concert by myself, eventually, the right things will catch up to me. But if I wait to do all of those and sit in the house, it, it, it can't catch up with me because it can't find me. I'm, I'm behind these closed doors. So ladies, sometimes we have to do that also. We have to get out the house. We can't find the right guy sitting in our comfort zone in our in our houses. Because if, if the right guy did come along and he knocked on the door and say, hey, I'm the right guy and the one for you, you would call the police and say that he was trespassing. But you ain't go out to find him. You ain't just allow yourself to be out and it drop on you or drop on me. You get what I'm saying? And now I'm at a point in life where it's like, hey, I'm loving me some me. And I'm only on the track was, was loving on me some me. You know what I'm saying? And I want to love on stuff. I don't want a one-sided relationship. I want to love and be loved. I want to have conversations. I want to treat someone very good. And I want to be treated great in turn. But with the reason I'm feeling like that is because I'm so at peace that I couldn't treat nobody bad. I can't be a nasty mean girl. Like my friend, she called that mean girl. You ain't gonna come over here with that mean girl stuff. I can't be a mean girl because a mean girl would throw off my spirit. It'll throw off my peace. And then I'm laying in the bed feeling a certain way because I done been a mean girl. I'm not gonna be a mean girl. I'm gonna be a happy girl. And with that, I'm going to attract happy people and comfortable people. And my goal is to, you know, attract that type of people into my circle, which I already have been. I truly have. I have. And it's like, sometimes they're greedy. I'll be like, gosh, hey. I did, you know... It's like, you know, I, it takes one, and then they say, you know, everything, everything. But it's just, that's where I am in life. And you're going to have people, when you decide to choose your, y'all like my pink light. It's actually different colors. When you decide to choose peace, you're going to have some people that love it. Like, I have, I have people that come up to me. Let me tell y'all something. I was in a place last Friday. And a Facebook friend of mine started talking to me. We were talking. And next thing I know, she was in tears. Just started telling me about the different lives I have and how she watches them. And just this and this and this and this. She was literally, I was standing there and I had to hug her. 
but she was literally in tears talking to me and it just touched my soul like I've never met her in person and she was talking to me and like was saying your spirit and this and this and this and I'm just like and talking and hugged her and they like, look but I have more people that are strangers that are that come to me and talk to me and say keep doing what you're doing and encouraging than I do people who really know me. And now my know me circle is so small. I, really, I mean, most time like with me personally, I'm I'm either with Tracy, Dion, Dominique, Monique, or my mama. Those are the people who I'm always with. Trace is my sister. Dion is my sister. Monique is my daughter. Dominique is my daughter. All my mama. So, not really around other people, but I have a huge family. But nobody in my family says that or does that or, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff like that. So, my inner my in, you know, my immediate family, we help each other and talk to each other and stuff like that all the time. But, I get more encouragement and I get more peace and words of wisdom and stuff like that from total strangers. Like right now I'm on live and I'm just talking because you never know who might need to hear this live. God dropped it on me to start to go live. So I'm just going live and then I don't really have nothing particular to say, but I, I feel my peace at the moment. And maybe somebody need that energy, that peace, that quiet. Like right now, y'all, let me tell you what I got on. I went to the gym, got a good workout in. Huh? Oh, I need to get back to the gym because this weekend, baby, I I let it all go. I ate and drank too, way too much. So I went to the gym, came home, took a bath. And some say, just go live. So here I am, live, drinking water. And decided to label it peace. Like if, if you go back to my Facebook post. I put on my Facebook post. I said. You will be surprised at how many people get upset. Because you happy. You want to be happy. Healthy. And love your life. I said I'm not one of those people. So be prepared to be sick. To love me or just be sick of me. You can unfriend me. I'm fine with that. And then I posted a bunch of pictures from this weekend. Because I'm going to be happy. Even if I'm hurt, I'm going to find my happiness. So I could be hurt about something, but I'm not going to live in the hurt. I'll feel it and I'll allow myself to feel it, but I'm not living there. I'm going to get into my happiness. You get what I'm saying? I spent too much time in places where I should have been more happy. Where I should have enjoyed the moment. Where I should have stopped let letting how things were with other people control how I carry my life. I wasted a lot of years, especially in my 30s. I wasted a lot of years in my 30s not being in control of my own self. Not that nobody was controlling me, but not thinking about, hey, let that shit roll off your shoulders because it is what it is. And choose joy. Not thinking to even think like that. You know what I mean? Like, some people don't like the internet. But I really wish that back then, YouTube and Facebook and TikTok and stuff was more prevalent. Because now you see people talking about that stuff more often. It's coming through your news feed. Especially Instagram and TikTok. Once you get that algorithm going, you'll get positive stuff like that coming through your feed so had that stuff been coming through my news feed back in the day i wouldn't have spent so many years in that little abyss that i was in so some people don't like social media i do as you can see i'm sitting here now and social media helps me with my business but social media allows me to hear thoughts from people who i would never hear from I would never be in their circle. We're not. That person could be in New Hampshire and they have a word for me. You know what I'm saying? So that's one thing I like about social media. 
that I can get words from people and I can go on like YouTube, that type of stuff. And it helps me out so much. So that's why I just went live for a little bit. I'm about to, I think I'll make me a hair appointment. Let Gigi um, just retwist my edges and put my hair in an updo. And then I'm going to sit in my bed and relax. I took my shower. I'm good. I'm sitting here got my in my little apartment. Let me see if y'all can see my turn the colors. Oh, now it's dark. But I'm sitting here in my little apartment with the, you know, different colors turning on, just kind of chilling. Watching TV, I love like this right here. I got pillows on my bed that I um just kind of discombobulated. Well, you can't really see, but oh dang, I know why you can't see. I had this over. What you see? Just sitting here with my little lights, TV on, watching Al Bundy. Candle over there burning and, and the the light on, and I love my little piece. I love it. I wouldn't change it. I would not. I just love my. It's just comfortable, man. You know what I'm saying? Look, I got. I, I have a little remote. That's why I'm changing the colors. Oh, red is sexy. Ooh. Let's see what this do. Let's see the different colors. Ooh, that's that pink baby. Let's see what that is. Ooh, that's that fuchsia. Come through now. Let's change the colors. Let's see what this one do. That's that color. That's the blue. Let's see what I got. Blue, blue. Back to that color. What's that? Oh, you know what I could do? I could change it up like a disco. <laughs> Let's see if I make it go slow. I can make it go slow. Mm. But this is just me, y'all. Living my life. Turn it around. Turn. Turn. And revolve. Oh. Back to me. That's it. So I will talk to you all later. I don't know who tuned in. I don't know who didn't. But mm -hmm. peace, love, like Soul Train. Peace, love, and soul. Deuces.